This is Bob, and we're up here in beautiful British Columbia. It is, um, what is it, April 10th, the uh, Easter weekend, and uh, we're all in the middle of um, COVID-19 lockdown. So um, here's a little something you can be doing while you're at home and enjoying the company of yourself and your family. <laughs> um, basically, what we're doing now is we're, we're going to um, talk about Start, starting seeds and I'll show you a couple of the easy ways to do that and um, doing some transplanting into the hoop house and also um, setting up a hydroponic system so uh, let's go ahead and get started first of all I want to talk about some of the tools that are here this is um, what's called a seed blocker or soil blocker sorry um, I got this one from Johnny Seeds in Maine uh, what it does is it makes four nice little blocks of soil that have an indent in them for planting the seeds like that and um, you don't have to use little plastic trays or any of that kind of stuff that you have to fish things out of because you've got beautiful little blocks that get formed um, and they uh, they root prune themselves by the air this is a, a little frame that i made to put these blocks in i made it uh, out of one by two cedar and um, a cedar shingle just nailed the bottom on there like that and um, you can rinse these off, put them out in the sun to disinfect them, and uh, use them again and again. This one gets used several times a season and uh, just comes back for more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, some organic soil, potting soil here, um, straight out of the bag, and I've dampened it so that it's basically at a consistency now where when you squeeze it like that, it balls up into a nice little firm ball and will hold its shape because that's what we're trying to do we're trying to we're trying to make um, soil blocks here and we want them to hold their shape so i'm i'm just digging down into there you can see where it's kind of flat on the bottom here now and as i bring it over here squeeze it i get a beautiful little row of soil blocks and i'm just going to do this right along here and fill up this tray. This tray is going to be for our um, our melons and our cukes and our squash. And um, I started our peppers and tomatoes much earlier in the season, about a month ago. And um, they are now outside hardening off. The weather's been quite fine. And um, they're able to be outside. I haven't put them out in the hoop house yet. But um, they're still coming back in at night. But this, um, this bunch of seeds here needs to start later just because cukes, squash, and melons are all pretty well the same family, but they're, um, they're all pretty fast growing. And uh, they don't take as long to germinate. They don't take as long to turn into substantial plants. And if you start these at the same time you start your peppers and tomatoes, you're going to have giant vines growing all over the place which uh, you're not going to be able to deal with so <laughs> it's better to start these later and I think for the most part these are fairly tender plants too so um, it's good not to not to rush it with them so I'm filling up this tray I've got one more row to go here and the trick is with this is just to try and make sure that each of your little blocks are full of soil and once they're in place like that you've got a beautiful tray of soil blocks there which we can now go and uh, plant seeds in all those little indents and we'll we'll stick little labels on there and um, that will get us going. So, uh, catch you back here in a bit. Okay, we're back now. And uh, what I've done is I've put seeds in all these little divots here. And I'm just going and I'm pinching the, the holes closed so that the seed's covered. Some of these um, places I've put two seeds, as you can see because the, um, the seeds that I'm using, some of them go back five years. And um, it's amazing how many are still viable. So uh, the, the older seeds, I'm just planting two of those and I'll select them out 
so that I get the best one out of the plants there and then let those develop. Uh, I've got some fresh seed in here as well, single seeds and those are, are sufficient. Um, given the price of seeds nowadays, that's probably fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to basically put this um, in a warm spot. I've got a, a seedling heating mat that goes underneath it and it'll sit um, with that mat underneath it for the next probably 10 days, um, something like that. I'm going to put a little um, plastic film over the top of it here just to keep the moisture in until I see the sprouts first starting to poke through the surface and then I'll take that off and then I'll just water them from the top. I use a little just a spray bottle um, to water them from the top and as they grow a little bit more into the second uh, leaf stage I can then um, think about adding a little bit of um, liquid fertilizer to my water and then I'll be transplanting them up into probably three inch pots. So we'll go ahead and do all that now and um, catch you next, next segment. Okay, so these are our um, peppers and our tomatoes that were started about six weeks ago inside and um, they're doing quite nicely. I'm trying to at this point harden them off so um, temperatures about uh, I don't know 45 in the shade or something like that today in Fahrenheit and it's um, there's a cool breeze blowing so this is a good good way to get these guys toughened up because I'm going to be putting them out into the greenhouse or the hoop house uh, in about two weeks time and uh, or less if the weather cooperates but I'll have to put a supplementary hoop over them to uh, protect them at night. Okay so uh, this is a whole another type of what we call a solar aquatic system an eco machine. Um, this whole setup the idea of this was pioneered by uh, Dr. Don, John Todd from New England and uh, what you can see at the top is a bunch of plants that are getting water pumped up from the bottom tank. They're basically filtering all the water that comes through, taking the nutrients from it and then down here we've got what would be our starters again in the net pots and um, this is kind of an ebb and flow system because I have this the pump shut off at night and the water level rises up again um, waters these these little peat pots and um, then in the daytime it pumps all the water back up into the top and keeps the level lower so they get a chance to dry out and not uh, get saturated this is a great little system for starting stuff inside particularly this time of year when it's still pretty cold out or you want to grow something year-round uh, you can do this inside your house creates a bunch of moisture inside your house which is nice in the winter time and uh, it gives you um, all of your greens and that type of thing that you want to grow so um, kind of a nice inexpensive way to do it it just involves a couple of a um, couple of larger plastic tanks here this one's a big peanut set up and a smaller one mounted up on top of it just so that the gravity will just take the water back down into the bottom recirculated and again we've got a bubbler inside here um, one of those aquarium tank bubblers and uh, that really helps keep the water fresh and oxygen we're back inside the hoop house now and um, this is our hydroponic setup that we've got in here you can see there's a series of holes drilled in this four inch PVC pipe um, it's they're three inch holes they fit these net pots quite nicely and right now we've got just three of these little guys in here as starts to see how they do while uh, things are germinating inside and getting stronger there. You don't want to have anything out here that uh, is going to be too sensitive but uh, it's you know still getting into the 20s Fahrenheit at night here so it is fairly uh, fairly cool um, but it warms up beautifully in the daytime. So this is a series of two pipes here and you can see the bottom one is not flipped over right now but the top one I have the uh, the black plastic covering it just 
so that keeps the algae from forming algae likes to grow when it gets UV and uh, if you have too many places for the the light to get in without anything in it to cover it um, you'll get a huge algae growth and uh, that will sometimes choke out your little seedlings so the water is basically running downhill here and then comes back into the tank here through this lower tube and we pop the top here we can see what's going on this is a pretty simple setup here you can see there's a pump in the bottom and there is a um, an aquarium heater which this time of year just helps to take the edge off and get it up to temperature so things will be a little bit warmer um, for small seedlings coming in here and that pump goes right up into this top tube here which is then fed through this top tube runs down the length of the tube comes back through the um, discharge pipe there and gets a little aeration when it gets back into the tank so two things I wanted to mention here that are pretty necessary um, this is a gauge for measuring your your water temperature and your total dissolved solids and um, your total dissolved solids will basically tell you how much nutrient, how much matter you have inside of your water, um, and that helps you adjust according to how much your plants need. And then this is your pH meter here, and again, this will tell you uh, what the water is running at for pH. You want to adjust your pH accordingly uh, so that you've got the maximum. Um, amount of growth depending on what type of things you're growing. So let's say you're trying to grow lettuce and spinach and, and some of your leafy greens like that. Uh, pH anywhere from say 5.5 to 6.5 is probably good. As long as you keep an eye on it, don't let it get carried away one extreme or the other. And um, this will help you do that. You can use um, nutrients and um, different things to change your um, pH should it be too high or too low first thing you want to do of course is test your water and then you want to add your nutrients to the water and then you want to check your pH and then balance it out so that it's at your optimal for depending on what you want to grow so we're going to be transplanting things from the inside to the hydroponics here in about a week's time or when we get a good um, amount of root growth on those small seedlings because I think we can uh, we can support some of those tender greens out here once they've uh, they've developed a good root system. Yeah.